Okay, this is an old people lesson. We just came out of our standard 20 minute seated Taoist meditation. Um, and we, before Tai Chi, in the morning, we do the AM breathing to energize ourselves. And then before we do Tai Chi, or in the evening, we do the PM breath. But this, this is a dated reference, some of you might get it. Did anybody used to read the funny paper? No? I was a big fan of the funny paper. And there was a column called Little Abner. Little Abner. Remember Little Abner? You remember the schmooze? Remember the schmooze? They looked like little flying hot dogs. They were sort of like the, the 1950s, 60s version of Care Bears. I'm thinking about this. They were, they were like these little creatures that loved everybody. I don't know if they were edible or not, but they looked like flying hot dogs. Anyway, when we do embryonic breath, the little illustration I make looks like schmooze. Uh, S-H-M-O-O-S, you can look up schmooze, or it might be S-C-H, I'm not sure. Anyway, so, so if you, because they also look like fetuses before the little arms come out. <laughs> like the, like uh, I'm six weeks pregnant and the first cold got a schmooze. Um, Here's a belly button. So we start inhaling there. We go around and it's going up the back. And then it goes to the tip of our tongue on the upper palate and goes down the front. So that's our little schmoo uh, circular breath that we do while we do seated meditation. Now, it, it, when you're trying to get into it, Usually when you put, and you know, I talk to my students about this, when you're first sitting there, you're just thinking about everything that's going on with your day and what went on, you know, uh, just your mind's churning, you're not, and your mind isn't still at all. And so you start to focus on the breath. You, you bring yourself into it gradually. Now, one way to get into it gradually is try to notice how many heartbeats per breath. So you can sort of stage your way into this without forcing it. Because you, this kind of seated meditation, you never try to force anything. You try to come into it naturally because it's Taoist, and you're trying to go with the flow and be, you know, in tune with nature. So you, you don't force it. So gradually, you you settle down into your posture, and you just start to listen to how many breaths heartbeat which is pretty interesting and then that brings you into this and it's not that hard to do it for 15 20 minutes I mean you, that should be your benchmark minimum is 20 minutes I've done I've done this enough to be able to say with some authority that if you do 15 it just doesn't quite make it and if you get past 20 you're like I could this is I have a significant shift in my mentality it's sustained, right? So kids, we don't force them to go the whole 20. We usually get them into it for, for just five, but you might meet an exemplary child that is just like super into it and just wants to be in it. Anyway, that's my, oh, so we're gonna do an application now from our Lehman 24. Um, you wanna step back a little bit, Terry, and maybe come on over here, Tim. So I think we're up to play the lute. Play the lute, or the pipa, the Chinese string instrument. Um, so that's a super lovely Tai Chi application. And you're, it, I like to use the metaphor of turning a truck steering wheel. Turn it, so you're making a right turn. Uh, one of the, laws in the form is that it only goes one way. So I, I decided today we're going to work on play the lute both directions. Because of course you have to be able to do it both directions. And another interesting thing is to be able to change, keep the hands there, but change the feet. Or change the hands and then have an opposite hand to play. So it's always slightly awkward for because Tim's like a head taller than me. So I, you know, I'm it's a stretch because I'm not doing the same size frame person. But if he has an arm coming up, let's do the back 
start as this is just a little carry, right? And then I'm going to turn the steering wheel to the right. I make now if I put my foot here, then it's a trip. So that one, so the form doesn't really go that way when we do it. It's inside hand to foot, but it should be able to go opposite. Now this is applicable on a lot of levels. So let's say he's in and I get in the fight this way and put this foot this way and do a big, that was a left turn. But you can see how applicable this is in um, martial arts, the seemingly innocuous move. Now another thing is that if you look at it, both hands are either going clockwise or counterclockwise. So typically, for example, when we get to the next part of play the loop, the hands are pulling and pushing opposite directions. These are going the same direction until the end, and then they go opposite. That's the part where it breaks. So the, the, you stick your hand out again. So this is the parry, and then it's the break on the joint. When they get so it's it's really only a half circle, and then palm towards the elbow. I like to talk about it that if you put your elbow inside your Laogun point and then just draw it apart an inch or two, that's where it comes to, right? Okay.